Hey folks, Buck WSR Weezer coming at you today, putting the do into do-it-yourself. And uh, I've got a, a pressure washer here with a Honda engine. It's got the Honda GC190 engine. And pulling the starter rope is so difficult, it's, near, it's impossible. There's no way I'm going to get it to start because it's so hard to pull this starter rope. I, uh, I want to show you how, I'll let you take a look at how hard it is. I just know I'll never be able to start it because it's just too hard. It's like the rope's about to break. And then I want to talk you through a couple of reasons why that might be happening and uh, try to fix this together. So let's get started. All right, watch me try to pull this. Oh, see how hard that is? It almost yanked out of my hand. Oh, there's just no way I'm going to get that to start. It's just too hard to pull. The rope's going to break. Well, if that's happening to you with your pressure washer, the first thing you want to check is to make sure that uh, the pressure isn't building up inside the pump. That could be the first thing that happens. And one of the ways you can relieve that pressure is just to pull the trigger on the wand. I promise you that's not the problem here because as you can see over here, I didn't even connect the wand. I got the water turned on and it is just, you know, I didn't put the wand on it. There's no pressure building inside the pump. The water's just flowing through it very easily. So I know that's not the case here. That could be the case with you. So relieve the pressure by squeezing the trigger on the wand and letting the pressure out of the pump. The second thing it could be has to do with what happens under this valve cover. So our next step is to remove it and check a couple of things under there. Four 10 millimeter bolts. You also might have to pry it a little bit to come loose because it's glued down with silicone sealer. One of the things that sometimes can happen is that the rocker arms, particularly on the exhaust side, the exhaust rocker arm could break. I wanted to give you a closer look at that. This is the rocker arm that opens the the, the valve, here's the intake side, here's the exhaust side. We know this is the exhaust side because the muffler's right here. And sometimes, if the valve gets stuck after maybe sitting for a while, these can bend or crack. You can check it very easily visually to see if it's bent or crack, or you can remove this pin and just pull that rocker arm out of there. Now this guy's in fine shape. He's not cracked. He's not bent. That's not the problem. And the valve's not stuck. So let's put him right back where he came from. The next, and you can check both sides. The next thing to check is that our valves are adjusted properly. And again, it's the exhaust valve that we're gonna check. The specification on this is four thousandths. So, if you see the cam here, and we want to turn, pull it so that that lo lobe is pointing straight up. Just like that, we'll now be able to check the, check the valve adjustment. And the specification for both the exhaust and the intake side on this Honda engine is 4,000s. And that's exactly what we have here. So that's not the problem. Strike three, we're out. No, actually I've already figured out what the problem is and I want to show you. It's the compression release mechanism is broken. And you can see it right here. It's sticking out. Ready? This is this is sticking out. Now I just push it back in. And it's a spring-loaded um, compression release that bumps open the exhaust valve to release 
a little bit of the compression so you can more easily pull it to start it. Then, once the engine's running, centrifugal force moves that compression release out of the way. So let me turn this and I'll try to show you. All right, so here's, here's the nodule where that compression release should be manifesting itself. Move it so you can see. Should be sticking through right here, and it's not. Now I can force it back in, and then this is in the this spring, there we go. Now it's in the right spot, that little bump right there, which will go past the, the rocker arm and just bump open that exhaust valve ever so slightly to relieve the, the compression and make it easy to pull, just like that, that little bump right there. But since that wasn't working, we had so much compression in that engine because the, uh, that guy right there, our compression release, uh, was not in the right position. It's not working. So then when the engine starts, centrifugal force moves this out of the way. So that it's no longer operating because once the engine's running you don't need that little extra help compression release and then when the engine stops the spring is supposed to push this back like that it's not working and so we're going to have to replace this compression relief mechanism which is connected to this cam gear so we're going to have to replace this cam gear i've already got the part in stock and we're gonna go ahead and do that together now. Okay, so here's the part. I hope you can see this. It's a genuine Honda part. There's the number if you need that. Now, I believe this is the same part for the Honda GC190 like we have, or it could be the GCV160, a couple of different Honda engines that this goes works with. So let's let's take a look at this and this is the good part so this one's in good condition so you see how it springs back so here's our compression compression relief nodule right there and that bumps that exhaust valve open as it turns by the uh, rocker arm and then when the engine starts centrifugal force forces it like this so it's no longer in service as soon as the engine stops, spring puts it back in the correct position. Just like that. So we got to replace this this cam gear on our on our engine. Unfortunately, you don't have to tear the whole engine apart, just taking off that valve co cover as we did is all as far as you have to go. Okay, so this uh, timing is very crucial that we get this right. And so I'm putting the, the lobe of the cam gear straight up. And that is going to correspond to the back here where there's a couple of lines. Hope you can see it, not sure. There and there that you have to line up uh, parallel with the top of the engine here. Those lines are a little easier to see on this guy, I think. So that has to be lined up just like that. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do, I, I got some white nail polish from my wife and I'm gonna mark the belt right at that top, right at the top there and make sure that we get that lined up with the, the centermost part. So let me put you on the tripod and then we'll mark that. We're also going to mark that same spot on this gear to make sure we get the new one on in the exact same place the other one was. Because if the timing's off, well, we'll have problems. Back up here. Hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm 
I'm going to mark the belt right there, which would correspond to this nodule of the gear. And then on this guy, that's going to be this guy right here. So we'll give him a little bit of white too. So the white on the belt will correspond to the white nodule on our gear. We'll let that dry and then we'll take out the uh, the old cam gear and put in the new one. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to uh, switch this guy out. Now I've already, I went ahead and removed the rocker arms from both sides just to make a, a little more room for us to work. Right here, this the, the cam gear rides on this pin that we can pull out right here. And when we reinstall, it's important to have this pin the flat side facing up. So let's see about getting this done. Pulling the pin out. Easy peasy. And we'll slide the belt off of the pulley. Hold on to that belt. Slide the new guy in place. Retrieve our pin. Slide him back. And our new uh, our new cam gear is in place. We can put our rocker arms back on. And we want to verify that nothing's changed with our timing. So let me just pull this around. And you can see right here, this is our compression release. Uh, so that is sticking up as it should and it's going to go by that rocker arm and just bump open that exhaust valve and it'll make it a lot easier to pull this thing around. And then when the engine starts, it'll swing open like that. When the engine stops, it'll swing back into place. So let's check these valves. Here we are. Four thousandths of an inch. That feels good. That's a tad bit loose, but not terrible. We could adjust them or we could leave them. I think we're okay, just as it is. So I wanted to mention one other thing. If you don't, it's not absolutely necessary to make the white marks and because it, what if the belt comes off the, the lower gear and then you don't know how to line things up. You actually don't need to make those marks. Another way to do it is to get the engine at top dead center. We pull out the spark plug, put in a screwdriver, and slowly turn the engine until that is screwdriver lifts up to its highest position. Then you can just install this uh, cam gear, lining up the two lines, you know, even with the top of the engine as we talked about earlier, and you'll be good to go. The next part is probably the most uh, frustrating parts cleaning off the old gasket material off the cover and then off of the uh, the engine that's a real pain applying some new sealant and putting the cover back on like so we got some bolts somewhere 
and uh, they won't be able to. They won't be ready to fire this guy up. I don't know if there's any other problems with this engine, but until we resolve this one, where it was impossible to to, to pull that string to start it, well, that had to be our first matter of business. We weren't going to have any chance of getting anywhere until we, we resolve that. Just a little bit here. Doesn't have to be super tight. And there we go. And that's it. Now we'll turn on the water and uh, see if it'll fire up for us. Choke out. Nothing else really wrong with this guy, I guess. But until we fix that compression release issue, we were dead in the water. No pun intended. Well, thanks for joining me on this project today. I learned some stuff. Never did this kind of job before. Hopefully you learned something too. And uh, it's good to have this baby back in business. Don't know how long it's been since it ran. Probably needs an oil change. But, uh, yeah, it feels good. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.